Hello everyone. Welcome to Maddie's Study Center. Students, today's our subject is history of class 6. The Indian subcontinent and history. Geographical conditions and history in the 5th standard. We saw at some length that there is a close relationship between man and his environment. We saw how the changes in the lifestyle of the early man and his technology were related to the changes in his surroundings. We also reviewed the history of human civilization from the Stone Age to the agricultural civilizations that flourished on the banks of rivers. History is a coherent account of the significant past events in the progress of human culture. Time, place, society and individuals are the four major pillars of history. We cannot write history without them. Of these four components, place is related to geography or geographical conditions. In this sense, history and geography are inseparable. History is influenced by geographical conditions in many ways. Students, geographic conditions means the natural physical environment presented by the country inhabited must be recognized as including aspect, soil, water supply, other mineral resources, flora, fauna and topography. Our diet, clothing, housing, occupation, in fact, all human life in any region depends to a large extent on its geographical characteristics. For example, the life of the people in hilly regions is more strenuous than that of the people on the plains. Not much fertile land is available in the hilly regions, while in the plains, it is available on a large scale. That is why, Grains and vegetables are scarce in hilly areas. In comparison, people on the plains get them in a sufficient measure. Naturally, this has an impact on the diet of the people. In hilly regions, people depend more on hunting and gathering for their food. We also find other such differences in the lifestyle of the people of the hilly regions and those of the plains. Hill is an appraised land area and plain areas are not appraised. Hills are not usually populated and contain very less vegetation whereas plains are intensively cultivated and populated. The climate, rainfall, agricultural produce, flora and fauna of the region where we live are the sources of our livelihood. The lifestyle and culture of a region develops with their support. Human settlements have flourished wherever the means of living are plentiful. Over a period of time, these settlements develop further into villages and towns. But sometimes reasons like the degradation of the environment, drought, invasions, many more, lead to the scarcity of those means. People are forced to leave their settlements. Villages and towns become deserted. We see many such instances in history. Thus we see that there is a very close relation between history and geography. Flora is plant life. Fauna refers to animals. Fauna derives from the name of a Roman goddess. But the handiest way to remember the difference between flora and fauna is that flora sounds like flowers, which are part of the plant world, fauna. However, sounds like fawn and fawns are part of the animal kingdom. Geographical features of India Our country India extends far and wide. At its north lie the Himalayas, to the east, the Bay of Bengal, to the west, the Arabian Sea, and to the south, the Indian Ocean. Except for the islands of Andaman, 
Nicobar and Lakshuri, the rest of the country is contiguous. We have to take into account this region, henceforth referred to as ancient India, when we study the ancient history of India. Before 1947, Chudis, Pakistan and Bangladesh were also a part of India. The following regions are seen to be important when we look at the course of Indian history. 1. The Himalayas 2. The plains of Sindhu Ganga, Brahmaputra rivers 3. The Thar Desert 4. The Deccan Plateau 5. The coastal regions 6. The islands in the seas Geographic features are naturally created features of the earth. Natural geographical features consist of landforms and ecosystems. For example, terrain types are natural geographical features. Conversely, human settlements or other engineered forms are considered types of artificial geographical features. Himalayas the Hindukush and Himalaya ranges have created an impenetrable wall on the northern side of the Indian subcontinent. This wall has separated the Indian subcontinent from the deserts of Central Asia. However, there is a land route to the Khyber and Bolan passes in the Hindukush mountains. This route was connected to an ancient trade route. The trade route from China passed through Central Asia and reached Arabia. It is known as State Silk Road or Silk Road. Silk was the main commodity exported to the western countries using this road. The route through the passes was used by many foreign invaders to enter ancient India. Many foreign travelers also came to India by this route. The plains of the Sindhu Ganga Brahmaputra this region consists of the basins of the three big rivers, Sindhu, Ganga, Brahmaputra and their tributaries. This region extends from Sindh Punjab in the west to the present day Bangladesh in the east. It was in this region that the earliest Indian civilization of Harappa and the later states and empire of ancient India emerged. The Indus Ganga Plains also known as the Great Plains, are large floodplains of the Indus, Ganga and the Brahmaputra river systems. They run parallel to the Himalaya mountains, from Jammu and Kashmir and Khyber Park Tinkur in the west to Assam in the east and draining most of northern and eastern India. The Thar Desert The Thar Desert spreads across Rajasthan, Haryana and some parts of Gujarat. A part of the desert lies in today's Pakistan. The desert has the Satluj River to its north, the Aravalli mountain range to its east, the run of Kutch to its south and the Indus, Sindhu, river to its west. The Ghakkar River that originates in Himachal Pradesh reaches the Thar Desert. It is known as Hakra in Pakistan. Its course in Rajasthan and Pakistan has now dried up. Many sites of the Harappan civilization are situated along the now dry course of the river. Indus civilization, also called Indus Valley civilization or Harappan civilization, the earliest known urban culture of the Indian subcontinent. The nuclear dates of the civilization appear to be about 2500-1700 BCE, though the southern sites may have lasted later into the second millennium BCE. The Deccan Plateau The region between the east and the west coast of India tapers off to the south. This region has the Arabian Sea to its west, the Indian Ocean to its south and the Bay of Bengal to its east. A region thus bound by the sea on three sides is called a peninsula. A major part of the Indian peninsula is occupied by the Deccan Plateau. The mountain ranges of the Vindhya and Satpuda are located to the north of the Deccan Plateau. The Sahyadri mountain ranges are to its west. 
They are also known as the Western Ghats. To the west of the Saharas is the coastal region of Konkan and Malabar. The mountains on the eastern side of the Deccan Plateau are known as the Eastern Ghats. Deccan Plateau has fertile land where many post Harappan agrarian cultures flourished. Deccan Plateau was a part of the Maurya Empire, the largest in ancient India. After the decline of the Maurya Empire, too, several other kingdoms and smaller empires continued to flourish in this region. The Deccan Plateau is a large plateau in western and southern India. It rises to 100 meters in the north and to more than 1000 meters in the south, forming a raised triangle within the south pointing triangle of the Indian coastline. The Coastal Regions From the time of the Harappan civilization, ancient India had trade relations with the western countries. This trade was carried on by sea. Therefore, India had developed contact and interaction with foreign cultures and people at the seaports. Later on, land routes came to be used for trade and transport. But the importance of sea routes did not diminish. Coastal areas are commonly defined as the interface or transition areas between land and sea, including large inland lakes. Coastal areas are diverse in function and form, dynamic and do not lend themselves well to definition by strict spatial boundaries. The Islands in the Sea Andaman and Nicobar are the Indian islands in the Bay of Bengal. Lakshadweep is a group of Indian islands in the Arabian Sea. The location of these islands may have been important in ancient sea trade. The manuscript Pericles of the Erythrean Sea or Handbook of the Red Sea makes a mention of Indian islands. It has been written by an unknown Greek sailor. An island or isle is any piece of subcontinental land that is surrounded by water. Very small islands such as emergent land features on atolls can be called islets, skerries, keys or keys. There are two main types of islands in the sea, continental and oceanic. The Indian subcontinent. The cities of Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro are in today's Pakistan. Afghanistan, Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and India together form the region known as South Asia. Considering the expanse and significance of India in this region, it is also known as the Indian subcontinent. The Harappan civilization had spread mainly in the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent. China and Myanmar, our neighboring countries, are not a part of South Asia or the Indian subcontinent. However, they had cultural and trade relations with ancient India. They have an important place in the study of ancient Indian history. The Indian subcontinent is a southern region and peninsula of Asia, mostly situated on the Indian plate and projecting southwards into the Indian Ocean from the Himalayas. Politically, the Indian subcontinent includes all or part of Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Maldives, Nepal, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. Thank you for watching video. Don't forget to subscribe my channel.